Good morning, YouTube. Today, I would like to share a new toy that I just picked up, the MSI Mag 321UP QD OLED monitor. Uh, I've been waiting on a good, cheap OLED monitor to, to become more affordable, and finally, I have it. So, uh, I'm going to do an unboxing, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my favorite specs and its performance. So, let's get started. Welcome to UberClock. Okay, I just got this box, this monitor delivered by UPS, and it's a big hole here, another big hole here. So we're going to open it up and see if the monitor's damaged. Hopefully it's not damaged. So let's get at it. It's probably safe. I'm going to say there's another piece of foam on the other side that sandwiches it, which should have protected it. All right, let's go through this. We have the base for the normal monitor stand. This one I ordered from Newegg, and it came with an additional monitor uh, arm, a fully articulating arm that is heavy duty, and we'll look at it in another video. And now we have, looks like the HDMI cable. It's got ultra certified. Doesn't specify the actual HDMI rating, but we can look that up and see what ultra is. We have the display port cable which we're not probably going to use. The bandwidth on this version of the display port isn't high enough to do what we want with 4K at 165 hertz. These look like standoffs, probably used for the base. Power cord. And the manual. Now, there's another piece missing. So I'll take it. They want us to pick this up. Using this. I don't know. Let's see here. All right. This side had a little puncture from that. We're going to hopefully not find a damaged monitor. Here's the, uh, the actual arm of the base. So everything looks like it's been untouched. Looks like the manufacturer's packaging hasn't been messed with, so it's not a return. If it is, they did a very good job packing it back up. Looks like they taped this down. Well, for now, I will probably set it up using this base. And then later I'm going to try out the, uh, the additional arm that was free from the new egg order. Since I ordered it new egg, it came with a free arm mount.
think we're fully free now. Let's take this guy out. Pretty heavy. I think it's going to hold up well. Attach it to use this to pull it out. Should uh, click right in. Now we can lift this up, pull right out. Don't feel any bad spots, but that don't tell us much, does it? Let's expose the screen. Looks good so far. So the next test will be to turn it on and see if we got any issues with the pixels. Very nice. This is my first 32 inch monitor. This is my first gaming monitor. It's pretty thin on around the edges. Take a look at the bottom. Power, HDMI, HDMI, display, USB C. USB C does carry some power to charge lower powered laptops. It's not the 90 watt, so it's not going to charge anything too powerful or under any kind of real load like gaming. But I don't know. Maybe there's some other USB-C things that comes along with a cell phone or something that could be charged via the monitor. We'll see. Very nice. Got the MSI Dragon logo. And it feels nice. Let's take off the plastic. Since the box was bent, dented, I think I'm gonna wait. We'll leave the plastic on it for now. I'll take off the ones that will let it breathe and then we'll leave the rest on it. And I'm gonna power it up and we're gonna see if the screen took any damage that we can't see with our eyes here. And also look for any bad pixels or other manufacturer defects. But from my understanding, MSI's got pretty good quality control, so the likelihood of there being manufacturing issues is not too terribly high. But let's take a look. All right, I've had it set up for a couple of weeks now, and I'd like to tell you what I think about it. I'm gonna start off with some of the physical attributes, um, the stand, navigation, overall body and design. Um, 
I'll start with the stand. The stand works pretty good. Um, it's nothing super special, but you do have some height adjustment. You do have a, a little bit of tilt. And of course you can swivel it. All this is uh, a little better than your basic stand. It doesn't have any of that. The build quality of the stand is nice. It feels nice and stable. It doesn't wobble. It's uh, pretty, pretty wide in the back and its attachment to the back of the monitor is nice. The, the VESA bracket and all that looks substantial and feels good. Um, overall the monitor is very thin but the section back there where the monitor stand mounts or clips in is, um, is nice and thick. It's uh, got a good bite there. The navigation system, the menu and how all that works is great. You have a joystick. It's at the bottom center. There are two buttons on each side to uh, uh, get to some quicker controls. Of course, one of them is the power button. Overall navigation is pretty easy to, to uh, work with with the joystick. That's great. Uh, I've had a few monitors with those and uh, I enjoy those types of controls. Um, it's probably honestly better than having a whole bunch of separate buttons for different things, which some other people might prefer. But overall, the build quality is nice and it does seem pretty well built and has a nice uh, polished look to it. Connections, uh, it does have one display port 1.4a. Well, 1.4a is capable of 32 gigabits per second. It does support data stream compression 1.2a. It has two HDMI 2.1 ports. Those support 48 gigabits per second and also support uh, data stream compression 1.2a. It's got one USB-C port uh, that's capable of DisplayPort 1.4a and data stream compression 1.2a as well. Um, it doesn't have a lot of power to it like some of the higher end models. Some of the higher end models have 90 watts. Um, this is not even half or is half. The, it, it'll be great if you got some lower power devices that might need power. You can clean up the clutter on your desk. Uh, I don't really see anything. I mean, you might could charge a cell phone with it, but you can't, you're not going to power a laptop with it. So, I don't know. I guess that they included it to have something for the lower power devices. Um, it has uh, one headphone out port on it as well. So if you you know feed audio or want to get the audio from the HDMI, you can get the headphones out on that and have an output there. Single pin stereo. Overall, um, you're going to need data stream compression enabled in order to do 165 hertz refresh rate. And that's going to be on any of the ports, um, even the HDMI 2.1. Even though HDMI 2.1 is capable of 48 gigabits per second, and that should be enough to do 4K resolution at 165 hertz. It, you can't enable it. Uh, I tried not running data stream compression. With, I'd had it turned off and it, uh, the highest it would allow me to go is 120 hertz. I confirmed this on MSI's uh, specifications on their website. It does say you're going to have to run data stream compression. Uh, with that said, data stream compression is a lossless compression. So you don't really have to worry about any kind of image quality issues by turning that on. So not really a big deal. Specification wise, uh, it's a 31.5 inch third generation quantum dot organic LED manufactured by Samsung. Um, up until recently, uh, most all the OLEDs were, they're all LG, it's LG technology. But now Samsung's uh, have licensing to do OLEDs and this is what they've come up with. So I imagine pixel density is a thing here. This is a 32 inch 4K monitor. So pixel density has gotten good or better with OLEDs. Uh, for a while there, you couldn't get smaller uh, 4K divi or displays. You could only get the lower resolutions, but pixel density has improved. Um, the native resolution of this monitor is 3840 by 2160, which is uh, ultra high definition 4K. And as we talked about before, it's capable of 165 Hertz. The response time is ultra fast at 0 0.003 milliseconds gray to gray and the tests show that it gets pretty close to that and to me that's insane I mean for years you know one millisecond was a good response time on monitors so something like this at 0 0.003 is wicked fast very very fast 
I don't do any professional gaming or competitive gaming, so I'm not going to be as sensitive to that. But if you are, uh, apparently the tests show that this thing is very fast and it performs as uh, specified. It does support adaptive sync. Uh, you can also run um, G Sync or for, uh, AMD Free Sync. Going back to the 165 hertz there, since we're talking about the syncing technologies, I chose this particular model because it was 165 hertz. They have a 240 hertz model, and I think they have one that's higher than that. I don't see myself running games, especially at 4K, with all the nice uh, graphics turned up, anything higher than 165 frames per second. I mean, that's that's fast. So I'm running the 4070 Ti Super, and it's a capable video card. You can run most games with everything maxed out at 4K, but not at 165 frames per second and nowhere near, you know, 240 or higher. Um, Adaptive Sync is basically gonna try to sync the monitor with whatever your frame rate is. And this is all to prevent the infamous tearing that happens in the image whenever you're playing a game with some motion against certain backgrounds and certain textures. If it's um, more in an open field type situation or you got more bland textures, it's more noticeable. The uh, adaptive sync, free sync, G sync stuff eliminates that, which is great. But it's probably if the adaptive sync's turned on. In my situation, I'm, I'm probably at 60 hertz or 80 hertz at most because the frame rate's not, not going to be up there. I, I'd rather have the uh, graphical settings turned up and everything looking nice as opposed to having a higher frame rate. Now, if you're a competitive gamer, I could see where you'd want to tweak the settings and try to get those frame rates up there to utilize the, the, the higher refresh rates, maybe. This monitor just sports uh, HDR True Black 400. HDR is a nice uh, nice addition to monitors these days. It allows it to do a higher range of colors, and I say colors, more of a brightness and darkness contrast. So you're capable of producing real bright brights and really deep blacks. And that's OLEDs really do well there. Um, OLEDs, as opposed to LCDs or any other technology, OLEDs do not require backlight. And each individual pixel has its own light or it's, it's self emissive and it's light. Which means that when it comes time to go into a black scene, it, the, the pixels turn off on OLEDs as opposed to a uh, backlight being dimmed or sections of it being dimmed if you're running um, if you're running local dimming zones. As far as the HDR performance, uh, movies and games look fantastic. I never really thought of HDR becoming a thing inside Windows doing business apps type stuff, but I suppose it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing graphic work or maybe uh, video work, then yeah, of course, you know, especially if you've got content that's in HDR, then you'll want a monitor that supports that. Uh, speaking to the HDR True Black 400 and HDR in general, uh, the brightness on this monitor is capable of 250 nits average with a peak of 1000 nits and this is where it's getting you know the HDR elements because HDR requires a super bright monitor in order to be able to produce that that contrast between super bright uh, content uh, or scenes and then super dark scenes to give it an incredible contrast uh, again Talking about OLEDs, you know, one of the weaknesses of OLEDs versus LCDs has been the overall brightness levels. And this monitor at 250 nits isn't extremely bright. That's not a very bright average. Uh, my previous monitor, which is a considerably cheaper LCD, was capable of over 300 nits. Now, the 300 nits on it looked definitely more washed out and the contrast ratio was nowhere near what this monitor is capable of being an OLED. So speaking to that, this monitor's contrast is rated at 1.5 million to 1. And basically OLEDs dominate when it comes to contrast. Now with that said, I think OLEDs actually don't require so much brightness as say some of the LCDs but it also depends on what room you're putting it in or where you're putting it versus the light, the ambient light levels and things, you know, that could cause the contrast ratio to become an issue. So 
if you're uh, in a bright room, you want higher contrast and you want higher brightness levels to overcome the, the glare from whatever's hitting the face of the monitor. Now, speaking toward that further, this monitor's coating is not, it doesn't have an anti-glare coating. It has an anti-reflective coating, which is not much different from, you know, the anti-reflective coating on a piece of glass, like your, maybe the glasses you wear, or uh, some watch crystals have an anti-reflective coating on them. You've seen it before, I'm sure. Um, some of them have like a purple twin tinge to the color, or maybe a green tinge, especially in eyewear. That's the type of anti-reflective coating this monitor has. So with that said, it does not have the hazy coating that's on most monitors. This monitor has a glossy looking finish, which I prefer. I understand that that's not always the case. Some people have it in a bright room or have sources of light that's behind them that could cause glare and the anti-glare coatings prove very useful in those situations. So for me, I like it. I like it being glossy. I don't like the impact that anti-glare coatings have on the image quality. I sit about 15 to 13 inches away from the monitor. It's a 32 inch 4K and that crisp clean edges around everything is important, at least to me. So if you put a anti-glare coating in front of that or in between that, it uh, will uh, fuzz out some of the texture detail. Uh, if you, take a magnifying glass or look up some of the screenshots or photographs that people have taken over the years of you know different types of monitor coatings and treatments you'll see where the pixels will fuzz out or get fuzzy looking if it's got too strong of an anti-glare coating not a, not the case with this monitor it's it's crystal clear because it doesn't have the anti-glare coating now anti-reflective coating can mess with color uh, I know some OLEDs that have coatings on them like that has had issues with the colors. Uh, Samsung's S24 uh, series phones have anti-reflective coatings on them and it messes with the color on them. They've had issues with it. Uh, other TVs had color issues with the coating. But uh, Samsung has did a great job at compensating and getting everything calibrated to work well with their coating. And in the reviews from like uh, rtings.com or ratings.com, this particular panel with this type of coating gets really good color accuracy, especially after they tweak it just a hair. Out of the box, it, it's pretty good, uh, better than most average monitors. But they were able to get it even better by putting it on a user setting instead of one of the auto settings and uh, tweaking it further. And with that said, if you uh, like, you can find uh, ICP color profiles that you can download from artings.com that will allow you to install and use their color calibrated settings. Now they don't have a review of this exact monitor. They've got a couple of different models from MSI using the exact same panel where they've calibrated it and they provide the ICP profiles for those monitors. What I have found is that most of these monitors no matter who makes them if it's the Samsung third generation OLEDs then they get very similar color accuracy so the ICP profile may actually be an improvement over the auto settings they said that uh, in their color calibration in artings.com and when they did the testing to find out you know what was accurate HDR true black 400 was the more accurate of the of the HDR settings now, speaking to the color accuracy, this monitor was rated to be able to produce 97.5% of the Adobe RGB color space and 99% of the DCI-P3 color space and 138.2% of sRGB color space. Looking at the reviews again, um, they show that the color accuracy is actually pretty close to that and it is capable of doing what it's advertised. Now, I don't have a uh, color meter or anything right now. My old one doesn't support OLED, so I'm gonna have to upgrade. I'm waiting on the prices to drop on those because I'm not made of money. But you know, hopefully one day I'll have a good color meter that will allow me to calibrate OLED monitors. Now that uh, you know these things are becoming a more of an option for us, uh, just normal average gamers. The viewing angle on this is rated at 178 degrees. 
I'm not too particular sensitive to viewing angles. I sit straight in front of my monitors and since this is a monitor and I'm like 12 to 13, 15 inches at most away from it, the viewing angle has never been a, an issue for me. But 178 degrees is pretty good. I can say this, when I enter my office where this monitor is being used and I come in from the side, the viewing angle is phenomenal. The image quality is beautiful and the color saturation is incredibly accurate all the way completely to the side. It doesn't change, shift, or wash out in any way at all. This monitor comes with a three-year warranty, which includes a burn-in warranty from MSI. That's a, a nice warranty. The price, yeah, it better come with a good warranty. This thing is still not cheap. Uh, I paid $7.99 for it. I think the monitor itself has come down. You can get it for $7.59.99. But when I bought it, it also came with that arm that I showed you guys or mentioned in the uh, unboxing portion of this video. Now, burn-in has gotten a lot better. This, these Samsung monitors don't suffer from it terribly. There's a one guy out there who's intentionally tried to burn in these, these, these panels and left like high contrast images up for months without any kind of uh, burning protection enabled and just let it burn just to see how quickly they would burn in and He was shocked at just how how very little that it actually burned in in that period So I don't think they're extra sensitive to it. Although there is a uh, nice uh, Pixel scrubbing or cleaning feature built into the monitor that you can turn on and set on a schedule and that will help um, Also, I did away with a lot of the static and stuff on my desktop like you can hide the icons I like the clean look of that anyway I have a rotating set of wallpaper images you can do videos if you want for your background hide your uh, start menu and all that if you do all of that and you turn off the monitor when it's not in use then I don't think you're ever gonna see it burn in at least for a very very long time and you'd have to have something that's static that's not getting changed if you obey those rules, it's no different from back in the day when CRTs had burn-in issues. And of course, they were the uh, plasma days when those guys suffered from burn-in issues. And of course, there's some LCDs were bad about it as well. But it seems like overall, LCDs weren't nearly as bad about it. Then that's when screensavers kind of went away. Back in the day, CRTs were the thing and screensavers were a thing because of the burn-in. I don't necessarily think a screensaver is required, but some people like them and they can be entertaining when you're on the phone and you're not paying attention and it just needs to have something not static for the image. Speaking toward the three year warranty, I wish it came with more, I mean, who wouldn't want more warranty? Uh, MSI is a pretty good sized company and they've been around. I've never had to personally deal with their tech support or their uh, to do a warranty claim or anything like that. I haven't heard anything horribly bad, but some of these companies can be pretty rotten about it. So it might not mean anything. I don't know. Hopefully it lasts considerably longer. My previous monitor lasted me five years. If I can get seven years out of this monitor, that'd be great. And who knows, if I might end up selling it in between then. If I can recoup some of the money and buy an upgrade, I might do that as well. But if I don't do that, and I hand this thing down to a family member, which is very likely, I would want at least seven years out of it. Um, I've had quite a few LCDs that lasted five years, so I don't think it's too much to ask for a monitor of this price to last a while. Now, I don't know, this is um, Samsung's made this particular OLED panel, so we'll have to see what, uh, what kind of quality control and lifespan this thing truly has, and it's going to take a while. I might uh, make another video in five years to talk about it, who knows. Text clarity has been an issue with OLEDs, um, especially the LG OLEDs. And the reason is because of the pixel layout. And they call that subpixel layout. The subpixel layout in or the first several generations of OLEDs from LG have been in a triangular shape. And Samsung has done a little bit different. Obviously, a different manufacturer is going to do some things different. And they seem to have improved the text clarity 
But to be honest, at this particular size, you're talking 4K at 32 inch, it's, you're not gonna see as much of the jaggedness from the strange pixel layout. But the uh, sub-pixel layout from on these Samsung panels, they are a little different. And they're a little bit more square or rectangular, similar to the LCD panels. So if you take a you know a big magnifying glass and pull back on it to look, you might can see it. There's uh, some photographs of it using um, imaging equipment to show you the pixel layout. So you can find those online if you want to check it out. But text clarity is good. 32 inch 4K, pixel density is high, text clarity is going to be great. I haven't witnessed any issues with it. I don't even have clear text enabled. Um, everybody recommends a 32 inch monitor at 4K versus say uh, 28 or 27 because of uh, the scaling. I still bump mine up to 125% of original uh, at the desktop level. Now I run 100% in games and whatnot because I prefer the, the clean uh, and simple nature of native revol resolution in gaming and of course with the new AI technology out and, and AMD's moving their FSR to AI driven technology for frame generation and scaling you know that issue from the past where you run outside of native resolution especially if you went lower than native resolution because you just couldn't you know your machine couldn't perform at that level you would always lose image quality because it, native resolutions it's translating at that point and it doesn't translate well. Well, with the AI technology now, they've improved that. So that's not so much a thing. You can run it at a little bit lower uh, resolution and it can do an artificial upscaling that almost makes it as good. Um, you can see a tiny bit of difference, but it's not great. And if you're having performance issues, turn it on. Turn on the scaling and, you know, tweak your settings and you probably will perform fine and look pretty good. Um, I'll post some links to some reviews. Uh, Artings.com has not did a review on this particular model, so I'll probably just post a link to a very similar model with the exact same panel that they did a review on. You can grab the, their ICP profile from there for this monitor. Um, uh, there's a few other links I'll post as well. Now, my final thoughts is this monitor is beautiful. It's fantastic. It's smooth as silk during gameplay. The contrast is just absolutely amazing. And I'm in love with the monitor. I'm so happy with it. It's great. It's my first, uh, what you would call a true gaming monitor with real high refresh rate, super low response times. And of course the OLED technology is wonderful. It's my first OLED as well. So you can imagine I'm just floored with the image quality and overall performance. It is brand new, so only time will tell when it comes to its quality and its longevity. And I'm hoping to see, you know, really good contrast and brightness levels five years from now. But we'll see. And if I'm really lucky, I'll get the seven years that I really want out of it. At this price, it's expensive. You know, I'm used to paying three, four hundred dollars for a decent monitor. But this is an excellent monitor, so it's been an excellent price. It's you know for what you're you're going to get what you pay for. And now that OLEDs are getting into the smaller sizes at 32 inch 4Ks, you know it's time to consider them for gaming. And with the response times and the beauty of OLEDs, it's it's wonderful. I highly recommend the monitor. It is fantastic in just about every way possible. You haven't made up your mind. I'm giving it a two thumbs up. So you got my recommendation on it. Please leave your thoughts on it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also don't forget the notification bell icon up there. It helps me out. I'm, my channel's brand new and I could use every bit of the help I can get. So I really appreciate you guys and I appreciate your comments. And if you got the monitor and you've got something that I've missed that you want to talk about, yeah, comment on it. And I'd be happy to carry on a conversation there about it as well. Thank you guys. And you have a wonderful day.